Our Father and our God, we give you praise. Because you said in your word, in Psalm 92, verse number 1, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name most high. We give you praise this morning because it's a good thing to do. We lift you up, O oh God, because you have been so good to us. Blessed be your holy name. Almighty God, even as you go to the realm of your word, to encourage ourselves this morning, to inspire ourselves, Lord, we ask you that your word we do that which is your determinate counsel in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your word bless your people. Amen. Let your word heal your people. Amen. Let your word help your people. Amen. Let your word inspire your people. Amen. Let your word empower your people. Amen. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. This morning... If you will, please turn your Bibles with me to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 12. 2 Samuel chapter 12. And I'm going to be reading from verse number 9. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord? To do evil in his sight. This was God. God is not talking to you here. God was talking to David. Amen. So God is not saying that uh, you are the one that has done evil. Amen. So let me just lay that foundation. You have done no evil. So don't be afraid. Praise the Lord. But God sent a message to David. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord? To do evil in his sight. You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife. And have killed him were the sword of the people of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah, the innocent man, the Hittite, to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house and I will take your wives before your eyes, and give them to your neighbor. And it shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. For you did, did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel, before the sun. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, because by this deed, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also who is born to you shall surely die. Then Nathan departed to his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and he became ill. May the Lord have blessing to the reading of his word. Once again, continuation of the series if the foundation be destroyed. And we are going to be looking at causes and effects. When the foundation is bad, when the foundation as it were is defective, is faulty, causes and effects. Now, the problems the household of David faced for generations was due to the thoughtlessness and the wicked acts of David the patriarch of his family. Let me say that God will forgive, but you cannot escape the consequence of the action. Permit me to say clearly, every child of God is free to choose his action, but no child of God is free from the consequences of his action, good or bad. The consequence can be a harvest of trouble for yourself or a corrupted foundation for the destiny of your children. Because every seed must produce a harvest. If you don't want, if you don't want a harvest, the only thing you can do is to make sure you don't sow any seed. But once a seed is sown, <laughs> it's difficult for you not to produce a harvest. My, my prayer for everyone listening to me this morning, wherever you are, 
Every good seed that you have sown in life, may it bring forth good harvest for you in Jesus' name. For any reason, anyone has mistakenly, carelessly, thoughtlessly, recklessly sown any terrible seed regarding your own foundation and existence, I pray, may heaven address such issue this morning in Jesus' name. The second point I want to quickly make is that more often than not, the harvest is always plentiful than the seed sown. According to Hosea chapter 8, verse number 7. God, look at the people. He said, You have sown the wind, and you cannot but reap the warm wind. It's the wind that is sown. He said, But you are not going to reap the wind, you are going to reap the warm wind. There is a big difference between a wind and a warm wind. Warm wind is very, is very disruptive. It is extremely dangerous. He said, simply because you have sown the wind. Now, we all knew what later happened to David as a result of the action of lie with Bathsheba, the wife of one of his soldiers in the war front, how he later sent the same man, Uriah, back to the battlefront where the battle was hottest, how the man used his own hand to carry his executioner's letter from David the king to his commander who did what he was supposed, what the king told him to do, and how Uriah, a very innocent man, but very loyal soldier, died in a very tragic way. Because all of that happened. God sent prophet Nathan to David to go and pronounce the passage that you have read this morning, especially the causes. What are the causes of some of these? Probably the, what you are seeing in your life today. I said this thing doesn't add up. This thing is not what the word of God says. Why are things the way they are? Number one, faulty foundation can be due to careless acts and deliberate acts of, of parents. We see that here. Whatever God pronounced, because of the careless and the reckless act, the wretched act of David, it came to torment his children. You will discover that most of the struggles and hardship that a person called Jacob faced were not the ones he initiated by himself. The mother brought him the problems that he had by a mischief, by a treachery, by a dubious action. Now he started with the mother. And of course, Jacob himself followed in the mother's footsteps of trickery, of supplanting. From Genesis 37, we see some of the children of Jacob also in Reuben and Judah continue with the same character problem which was as a result of the foundation that the mother laid. They said, when they were making their conspiracies, as well to get rid of Joseph. <laughs> I mean, they began to say, they say let, let, let's show him to the pit. I mean, your blood brothers. Oh, they said, no, no, no. That won't be good enough. So let's kill him. No, they said, that won't be good enough. You can imagine the kind of evil in their heart. They said, oh, let's make money out of him. Let's sell him, let's sell him out of slavery. And then we will say, an evil beast has killed him. Look at the level. Look at the level of wickedness in the heart of men who are supposed to be blood brothers. Beloved, it was part of the seed that the mother sowed, which began to run generationally. But thank God, the Lord saved the life of Joseph. The Lord rescued him. And what was meant to be a punishment of David for, for Joseph, 
it later became the divine orchestration to elevate him to his glory. I therefore pray for you. May there be any situation in your background that the enemy has meant in order to destroy your destiny. May it lead to eventual to your eventual elevation. I said, may he lead you to the fulfillment of your prophetic destiny. May he lead your children to the fulfillment of their prophetic destiny. In the name of Jesus. So from this story, both of David and uh, the patriarch Jacob, some parents laid some problematic foundation for their children by indulging lifestyle as well. The first one is wicked at the second one I'm going to quickly look at is indulging life, indulging style, indulging parenting style. Some parents have carelessly, they didn't intend it that way, but they laid a terrible foundation for their children when they were young by their indulging parenting style. And some children take advantage of it and turn out with all kinds of character issues in adulthood. Then judge, parents, please, I want to encourage you. Don't lay a bad foundation for your children by, 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 by indulging lifestyle. I want to encourage you. Do whatever the Bible says you should do in order to raise your children. If God says you should nurture them, according to Proverbs 22, 6, Nurture them in the way of the Lord. Don't be a parent that will be clueless of spiritual things like manual. Don't be a parent that will indulge the children like manual as well. Because when we do that, we are unknowingly laying a terrible foundation for their future. As it's often said, it is easier to build good boys than to mend broken men. Some, they've laid a terrible foundation for their children because of their cluelessness of spiritual things. As parents, they are clueless. As father, is clueless. And it doesn't bother him. It's not good enough. God has created every one of us as a spiritual being. And he expects us also to raise children who are going to be spiritual beings. Unfortunately, especially to our fathers, I want to encourage you, don't be a father like Mr. Manuel. We all know the story of the life of Samson. You can be blaming Samson for all the all the, all, the, all the nonsensical, the foolish, the reckless, the sinful lifestyle that he lived. But it was because of the foundation that the father laid. Mr. Manoa was extremely clueless about spiritual things. And it didn't bother him. He was always on the field, according to the Bible. Even when the angel of the Lord came to visit the family, he was on the field. And the first time the angel came, he delivered the message of the birth of Samson to the wife. Mr. Manoa came back from the field and the wife told him, Honey, I will receive, I receive a visitor today. This is what he said. We have been waiting on the Lord for several years for this first child that I'm going to, we are going, I'm going to conceive. The child shall be a Nazarite. No razor shall touch, he said. He shall drink no wine. He shall not touch anything that is unclean. And it shall be this. He will be the leader of my nation. Ah, Mr. Manu has regretted. He said, oh Lord, oh that we send the angel to come back. And God was kind. God was so merciful. You know, God answered the prayers. And God sent the angel back the second time. When the angel came back the second time, alas, where was Mr. Manu again? The man nowhere to be found. He has gone again. He was nowhere to be found. Where was he? Where was he doing? Who should have taken a seat and sit down? And say, until the angel come back. Since I've already prayed, immediately, I want, Lord, I want the angel to come back. And I'm not going to go anywhere. I am on, I am on self in post lockdown. I quarantine myself. I'm not going to go anywhere. 
Lord, until you send the angel. But no, he didn't do that. He's gone again. He's gone. He's gone. And even when the angel waited, and the man came back, if you see the kind of question the man was asking the angel, you will know that this man is extremely clueless about spiritual things. What is your name? The man said, the angel said, what do you want to do with my name? And can I prepare food for you to eat? The angel said, even if you prepare, I will like, am I going to eat your food? The wife already knew that it was a spiritual being. But not Mr. Manoa. I pray for you. Listen carefully. To us, especially we fathers, we know God has given us responsibility to be the breadwinner for our homes. But listen, we have to do things in balance. If you win not the bread, but you lose the bread eater of what you use. Of what purpose? So please, man, don't let us by our action. We may not have intended it, lay a terrible foundation for the future of our children. When we have to be there for them physically, let's be there for them. When we have to be there for them spiritually, let's be there for them. When we have to be there for them emotionally, let's be there for them. This is laying a good foundation for the future of our children. And as you do that, God will bless our efforts in Jesus' name. Now, number two, 40 foundation that is due to the thoughtless, the careless, unconscionable act of individuals himself. In other words, this one is not anything that the parents have done, but the individual himself. And we see that in the, in the, we see that in the Bible. Look at the story of the prodigal child. In the book of Luke chapter 15, if you begin to read from verse, verse number 11. You know, he was under the care of his parents. I believe the parents, they were doing everything they ought to do for him and his brother, his sibling, his senior brother. But the time came. He said, he called his father. He said, Father, everything that is mine, that is by way of inheritance, I need it now, 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 now. Give it to me now. But this boy was still a boy. This child was still a boy. You know, if you read the book of Galatians chapter 4, verse number 1, he said, as long as he's still a boy, even though he's the heir to all things, if he's still a boy, and there are a lot of things for him to inherit, he said it's not better than a slave. Yeah? So he was still a boy, but he said everything, I mean, he couldn't just wait. Instant gratification. Whatever I need. That's why he said he's a boy. Because he's a boy that whatever they want, little child, whatever they want, they want it now. Instant gratification. He said, give it to me. The Bible says, the father has said, they gave him everything that he needed. Even though I think the father was also indulgent. The father could have said, listen, if your senior brother is there, and they are still taking his own inheritance, you also sit down. So, but the father was also complicit. The father said, you this boy, don't kill me, don't kill me. Since you have been asking, have it. Which is what some of us, some of, some of our parents do. They know it's not good. They know it can lead to some terrible consequence for the child. But it's like, this child, I've been telling you, don't kill me, don't kill me. But now, don't kill me. Don't, don't kill yourself, just go. But the truth is, when the problem will come, uh, there is a saying where we come from. If your household is sitting whole or not, and is saying that there are, uh, there, there are terrible insects inside it, and they see it in it that way, when the trouble starts in the night within, he will not sleep, and you, the householder, will not sleep as well. So you better call him to order. Now listen, if we are still going to sleep oh, inside this same house, this thing that you are doing is going to hurt you. Or oh, it's also going to give me discomfort. Stop it. Amen. But the Bible says, thank God, when he came back to his senses in a foreign land, after he has wasted all his inheritance in riotous living, the Bible now said he began to feed with the pigs. He now came to his senses. He came to himself. And he said, no, no, no. Life, my life is not meant to be this way. And it cannot continue this way. I will go back to my father. And what is the story there for us? I want to encourage every one of us listening to me. It doesn't matter how far you have gone in doing the wrong thing. It's never too late to do the right thing. It's never too late to do the right thing. 
Why? Because it doesn't matter how long you have been traveling on the wrong direction. The wrong direction can never take you to the right destination. That's why the Bible says, the book of Psalm 190 verse number 59. The psalmist says, I thought about my ways. I reflect upon them and I turned. Why? Because he knew as long as he was going in that direction, after reflecting upon it, he can never get to the right destination. So he said, and I turned my feet. Lamentation 340. He said, now try out and examine our ways and turn. So for any reason, you have begun to see traces that the way you are doing things as an individual, hey, it may likely be in trouble in the future. Wherever you are listening to me, I pray for you. The grace to be able, the discipline to be able to correct yourself and turn. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, foundation founded on unprofitable name or wicked pronouncement. There are some foundation that have that people, parents lay for their children that later years the consequence comes, and how do they lay this? Either by way of the words that we speak, the proclamation we make, the names we give, and begins to follow children. It begins to follow them into adulthood. I remember a sister, I mean, wonderful, beautiful sister. I was somewhere in one of the states one day, one of the cities in one of the states somewhere. I won't mention the, the state or the city. And after the first night program on the Friday night, after I finished speaking and we prayed, as I stepped out into the parking lot, this is a runner to me in the dark. And he stopped me by the car. And he said, Sir, the last word you spoke was for me. That was just the picture of my life. He said, I have faced hardship in life, and it should not be so. Growing up, I went to one of the elitist schools. And when she mentioned the school, I said, yeah. I went to one of the elitist high school growing up in Nigeria. Because that is the, the city where I also had my high school education. When she mentioned the school, I said, definitely, <laughs> I mean, your parents, they must, you know, is that they are connected, or you are very brilliant, or somehow, somehow, for you to have gone to that kind of school. He said, but, you know, my father traveled to America while I was pretty young, let me with my, my, my grandparents, and I was living in grandparents' house. He said, now one of my uncle came. One day, I was still in high school. I didn't know what I'd do for him, probably because of issue between him and my father. And he looked at me and he said, listen, it doesn't matter how early you start any journey of life. You will always arrive late. You can imagine that kind of witty, spiritual Declaration over the destiny of a child. That doesn't matter how early you start any project of life, any journey of life, you will always arrive late. He says, Sir, that has been the story of my life. Immediately I finished, I traveled to England. After 10 years, nothing to show for it. I was deported back to Nigeria. I put my papers together again. God granted me the opportunity and the mercy. I found myself in America. This is sir. Uh, this is my Good almost. Good morning, church, and welcome this to our is online my service. Almost eighteen years in America, I still don't have paper to live in this country. No child. Marriage is not there. I mean, when she narrated that story, I said, I "Look at this beautiful sister, for God's sake." I mean, how can and he said the word that that man spoke has always been tormenting me. Thank God, God is a good God, and with Him, all things are possible. My prayer for you, under the sound of my voice, may you be somebody who possibly is destined is conforming to what I'm speaking about, or you know someone in that situation and you love the person. I pray, may ever deliver everyone in the name of Jesus. As parents, we must be careful. The kind of words we speak into the life of our children. One of my, one of my 
close cousins, who is a pastor in England today. <laughs> well, I went to England one day, and uh, we were in a group of people, and he began to say, ah! He said, pastor's mother, reverting to my mother. He said, when we were growing up, up to the time I was the age of 20-something, we were living together. Even when pastor was no longer in our midst, he said, there is something that that grandmother is always saying. It doesn't matter how terrible a child is in the entire compound. And you know, I told you, my, father, my grandfather's compound is about 24 rooms. He said, it doesn't matter what any child, how terrible any child is. He said, when pastor's mother will speak to that child, he will say, you, this child of great destiny, you are molori ah, ah, Not the other women will be looking at, uh, uh, this one, this one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because the woman has an understanding. That was, was a spiritual. According to the Bible, John 6, verse number 63, Jesus said, the word that I speak to you, their spirit and life, was have, a, was have the tendency of taking up a life of themselves. And you will begin to see the destiny aligning to the world. You see, don't believe me? Look at the life of Jabez. You don't believe? Look at the life of Benjamin. Benjamin. Whose mother also named him Benoni. Son of sorrow. But the father has good understanding. He made it correct. I said, no, 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 no. This one not going to be Benoni. This is going to be Benjamin, the child of my right hand. That's why I said, it's good for fathers to know what they should know. Yeah, because immediately, the father immediately corrected it. He said, no, 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 this child shall not become Benoni. Because he knew. Ah, to, 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 to all those who are in spiritual authority, may you know in Jesus' name. Amen. Ignorance can be so destructive. Beloved, in rounding up, There are some things that we see in our foundation that could have led some of us to live a life of limitation. And it's not because you are not making the effort. It's just that every effort that you make, you cannot just see the result. I therefore pray this morning. It can happen in marriage. It can happen in physical endeavor. It can happen in your career. It can happen in business. It can happen in, even in parenting. It can happen in the lives of your children. There are some of us, there are certain things that we saw as a pattern in the life of our parents. You are almost seeing the same thing in your own life. And you are almost seeing the same thing in the life of your children. Then there is an issue. I want to encourage us. Don't let us keep quiet. Even as you have, as you have been listening to these messages, it's for us to be able to examine. The Bible says, Whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty, James 1.25. Okay, let me start from verse number 22. James 1.22. He said, be ye not just hearers of the word, deceiving yourself, but be doers of the word. Be ye not be just the hearers of the word, deceiving your own self. Because many people will hear and they will not do anything. They can quote the word of God. They can hear the word of God. They can read the word of God. But they don't do anything about it. He said that individual is deceiving himself. He said, but be ye doers of the word. He now said in James 1.25. He said, whosoever now hears this word of mine and continue doing it, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, of the work, the same shall be blessed. If you are going to pray, prayer is good. And you all know, I love to pray, and I love prayers. But prayer by itself, it cannot really bring much profit if you don't add action to it. Like I always say, prayer without action is hypocrisy. Action without prayer is arrogance. Apostle James told us clearly, James 2, 17, faith without work is already in the grave. That faith is already dead, it's in the grave. My prayer this morning, as you put action to the word that you hear, regarding the message in the last four weeks about foundation, 
May there be an area where God needs to address certain things. May there be an area where you also need to address certain things. The grace and the discipline to do that may be released upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.